Hey, Shalom, Makim, Shalom. First thing and foremost, front and front of all praises and glory and honor is due to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, Hashem, Kapitash. I want to give that one to the elders and apostles. Elders and apostles are great millstone. Peace and blessings and salutations to the whole elect. Those in this gospel, brother, with the standard of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, wherever it may be. Uh, this is just a quick lesson through the Spirit. Empower Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai. Uh, titled No Leaven. Okay, and that's uh, a statement uh, that the Spirit, you know, has put on me to state no leaven. Okay, which we know leaven is pretty much the yeast or the fermented yeast that allows bread to rise. Now, everything you eat in this society contains some form of leaven because, you know, we're all bread eaters, which, you know, bread is not necessarily bad for you, depending on what bread you eat. You know, like white bread, and the shit is trash, it's poison. I wouldn't encourage it. Um, I haven't had white bread, me personally, in years, but, you know, sometimes when you go to restaurants and stuff or different restaurants, they may give you here white bread here and there, but I haven't bought white bread in, like, damn near 10 years, okay? So if you're eating breads, it's damn sure you want to make sure they're whole grains or, 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 or wheat bread because those are easier to digest because they have fiber in it, okay? White bread doesn't really contain any fiber. It's been pretty much depleted of its resources, that's why uh, you have chronic constipation and so forth because of the foods and the stresses and the lifestyles and the toxins we breathe in. But I'm alluding more to uh, in the faith and the truth, okay, or your immediate household, because believe it or not, even in your immediate household, that's, you know, that's 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 part of your um, your makeup. That's part of your circle, you know, and you don't want to be at odds with people, you know, people that, I mean, when I say odds with people in your household, meaning like your wife and your children, Okay, as far as your parents, your cousins, your brothers and sisters, that's that's not really your household, okay? But your family, your immediate family that's under your jurisdiction, you want to be in complete unison with them, even if they're not in the faith, because of the simple fact, they can get salvation based on your work, okay? Not saying that they're supposed to be in a fucked up spirit towards you, because your woman, if anything, she needs to be repenting to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, and yourself daily, okay, for the offenses they've committed against us. Okay, so it's a two it's a two way street. It ain't just we have to apologize to everybody and right our wrongs. They have to do the same thing too, even if they unbelievers. You know, because one one off situation can destroy the dynamic and it could derail a train. Okay, so you brothers that got wives and shit like that coming into this Passover, you know, make sure y'all get y'all things squared out. You know, make sure she's in a in a better spirit and a good spirit. Make sure she's in a righteous spirit, even though she may not believe. You know, but still. She's supposed to be a right towards you and, you know, you do right by your family to the best of your ability. But in the brotherhood, mainly, definitely, uh, you don't want any leaven there. Okay, leaven is a, basically a, a, a chemical that causes bread to rise, okay? And it's the whole concept of the Passover, okay? Going into your Haoshai sacrifice, what you've done for our nation, okay? And it tells you in the scriptures... That you're supposed to have any no, no we're gonna get into it. I don't want to butcher it, it's still early. But I'm gonna read this real quick. This is the book of Leviticus 23. And I'm gonna start at verses uh let's start at verses uh four. It said, But these are the feasts of the Lord. The feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations which you should proclaim in their seasons. We in the beginning of the year, okay, Passover, okay, the month of Abib, the first of year, first of months. It says in the 14th day of even, in the first month of even is the Lord's Passover. So we're in the first month, okay, contrary to popular opinion, January is not the first month. It says, um, and on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread, okay. So, unleavened, let's look that up real quick. Which goes into unleavened bread cake without leaven. Okay, so uh, let's look up leaven. It says, in cooking a leavening agent or rising agent, also called a leaven or leavener, is any one of number of substance used in doughs and batters that cause a foaming action that lightens and softens the mixture. An alternative of supplement to leavening agent is mechanical action by which air is incorporated. Leavening agents could be biological or synthetic chemical compounds. The gas is produced often carbon dioxide, occasionally hydrogen. So it inflates the bread. Pretty much put an air base in it. You know, like a piece of that's leaven. 
you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, breads, uh, you know, uh, particular yeast and so forth like that. You don't want to have any of that for the week because it's a purifying week. Okay, you don't want to have that in your hearts mainly. It's what it's really going into having that 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 hatred or that um uh, that 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 uncertainty against your brothers, man. Like if you have all your brothers in a camp, y'all might not be the closest. Fine, but you know, squash your beefs. You know, so I want to say, you know, any brother or anybody out there that I'm anybody that I've I've offended out there, hey, I want to say sincerely, slock you. You know, it wasn't my intention. Whether it was unintentional or unknowingly or intentional, <laughs> you know, I want to say slack you to, you know, anybody if I've offended out there, you know, in this thing. But, um, and then you keep it pushing, man. You know, they can only accept it or don't accept it. But, you know, we want to go into this ceremony being as pure as possible, man. You know, being blameless. Okay, because that's the worst thing you can do. The scriptures tell you in John the fourth chapter, he who hated his brother without the cause is a murderer, man. Okay, and then what this guy Alize did... Hey, look, man, it is what it is. He's going to be held accountable for it. But me personally, I don't hate Alizé or Alizar. I don't know the, the, the brother like that to even hate him, but he just, he's, he's wicked. He has a wicked spirit. But, but, you know, I don't hate him. You know, he just, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I want to kick, nah, fuck it. It ain't, it ain't even like that. You know what I'm saying? I let the Lord deal with it because, you know what, I don't want to be guilty of having anybody's blood on my hand. You know, when I'm not, uh, uh, when I'm not perfect. You know, and that's how we look at things. But nonetheless, we are to reprove and to rebuke. And if he don't get his shit together, the most high is going to take his monkey ass out. And I stand with that. But regardless of that, man, you know, that that if he goes into the Passover with this hatred in his heart for Great Millstone and you justifying the wicked and condemning the just, the most high is going to visit that man. And he's already visiting him. He's waxing worse and worse. But me saying that doesn't mean I hate him. OK, so this is the book of Exodus 12. And I'm going to start at verses um, 4. It says, matter of fact, let's start at 4. Point is down. It says, and if the household be too little for the lamb. Uh, matter of fact, nah, let's start here. 5, it says, and your lamb should be without blemish. Okay, meaning unspotted, pure. Yahweh Shai was a lamb unblemished, which represent him not sinning. Okay, it says, a male of the first year, ye should take it out of the sheep from the or from the goats. And ye should keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Meaning, you know, we have our Passover, we kill the lamb, we eat it, which represents Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. He is the lamb. Yahweh Shai was born around this time. So if you want to talk about celebrating somebody's birthday, well, technically speaking, this is around the time Yahweh Shai was born and we're celebrating the Passover. But we ain't throwing no damn birthday parties and no hats. This is a solemn assembly. You know, ain't no Christmas presents under the tree. We got time in a year that we give gifts and presents and stuff like that. Which giving gifts is not off, but you have to do it according to the probable customs. Okay. It says, and they should take the blood and strike it on the side post and on the upper door post of the house is where you should eat at. Which the blood represents the covering. Lord's will be covered. It says, and they should eat the flesh at the night and roast fire and unleavened bread with the bitter herbs. They shall eat it. The bitter herbs represents this harshness of this captivity, man. Okay, the, the fucking body elements, the Esau mainly, you know, getting with your woman and the fucking, this, this whole kingdom is bitter as hell. Hey, you trying to teach the word of the Lord and your fucking hip will go out of joint. <laughs> That's bitterness, man. You know, it says, eat it not raw nor sodden it at all with water, but roast up a fire, the head and his legs and with the puniness thereof. And we understand brothers ain't cooking a whole lamb, you know, we get lamb ribs or lamb chops and or shoulders or whatever you want to, and you, you cook it and you keep it at that. And Lord's will, this is the last Passover because, you know, they're talking about artificial lamb. Can't keep Passover with artificial lamb, man. You know, what is a Passover without lamb? And it says, and ye shall let nothing ever remain until the morning, that which remained of it until the morning ye shall burn up with fire. Okay, so whatever you have left over, just get rid of it. But it's going into the pureness of our hearts, our spirits. You know what I'm saying? Not having that off towards one another because you got brothers in this thing, man. They just don't fuck with each other. And we talking about in the ranks of Great Millstone, man. You got secret hatred. You know, niggas being niggas, niggas backbiting, niggas talking shit about brothers. Oh, man, I don't really fuck with that brother like that. Going to other camps, speaking on brothers' ill dealings and so forth before you went to that, man. That's a whispering and a backbiting spirit. You don't want to have that. And if you're doing that, you better cut it out. Okay? Make peace with your brothers, man, because at the end of the day, man, well, what else you gonna do? 
Okay, you might not like the man's personality. So what? Okay, that's cool. Ain't nobody say you got to hang out with him or go to his house or play Xbox with him. Just squash the beef and continue to do the work, man. You know? But it says, and you should eat it with your loins girded and shoes on your feet and staff in your hand, and you should eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Okay, but uh, I'm going to go to the part when it says 11. All right. Um. Damn, I lost it. Yes, sir. Here you go. Verses um, 15. It says, you should eat unleavened bread, which is the same pass, the same ceremony. It's, it's, it's a weak ceremony. It says, even the first day, you should put away leaven out of your houses. Okay? And that's literal and spiritual. Get the flour, whatever it is in your house, and get it out. The seasoning, salts, and shit. Everything that contains leaven in it, just get it out. Okay? We in hard times. You ain't got to throw it away. Just go put it in a box or set it in your garage or put it in your trunk of your car. Me personally, I don't know if I have that much leaven in here. Uh, for real. But, um, whatever I do have, I'm going to just put it in the trunk of the car because... I mean, times are times are hard, and I mean, it's about faith. I could throw this shit away. Lord have blessed me with it and get whatever I need. But, you know, just being circumspect. And whatever goes bad, I just throw the shit away. Ain't a big deal. But it says, seven days you should eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you should put away leaven out of your houses. And that's out of your spirit, your bodies, your minds, man. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day into the seventh day, that soul should be cut off from Israel. So that all oh, you want to get that out of your spirit, man. Okay, you don't want to have that. Okay, you don't, you don't, you don't want to have that in your spirit. You don't want to have that. Oh, you know, even if brothers are secretly not fucking with each other. Okay, don't fuck with each other, but still, you know, just make sure you you, you squash the tension. That's why I just said anybody that I may have offended. You know what I'm saying? I want to say Salakia, and we ain't just talking about no typical two third niggas, man. We talking about people, brothers. You know, in his faith, man, you know, your wives and kids. I mean, it ain't nothing wrong with apologizing to your wife if you offended a woman, man. I mean, shit, you know, I mean, shit happens. We go off too. I'm not saying that your woman ain't no being a demon. She's a demon. She's a demon. But, you know, she's trying to be right. There ain't shit wrong with saying, you know what, baby, I apologize. My bad. And I only keep it moving, man. And she need to do the same shit. You know? I mean, the scriptures ain't against us treating our wives good, but they have to treat us good first, you know. <laughs> but, uh, and it says, and that first day should be a holy convocation. And the seventh day, there should be a holy convocation unto you. And no matter of work should be done at them, which is a Sabbath, which is beautiful because it's Sunday. Most brothers don't work on Sunday. So that's beautiful. That's mercy right there. But it says, save that which every man must eat, that only may one be done of you. And you should observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is still a Passover. Unleavened Bread, and for the same seventh day, I have brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, you should observe this day in your generations of my ordinance forever. Okay, and we're coming into a new Passover when America is going to be destroyed. All right, but it says, and on the first morning, you notice he keep repeating himself. On the 14th day of the month at evening, you should eat unleavened bread. Got to keep telling Jake this. Until the 1 and 20th day of the month at evening, because that's seven days. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So from day 14, which is the two weeks into the month, which you can tell that you're in the second week of the month because when you look outside, there should be a full moon, okay? And then um, 20th, what is this? The 20th day of the month, evening, which will be on the 21st day, which is seven days. It says seven days, there should be no leaven found in your houses. It says, for whosoever eat it, that which is leaven, even a soul should be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. And ye should eat nothing leavened, and all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. Okay, so he keeps repeating that. And that's spiritual too, because you don't want to have all, man. You know, going back into having all, you know, secret animosity, you don't want to do that, man. Okay, Galatians 5 and 9, a little leaven leavened the whole lump. Okay, you don't want to be in that Rico spirit. You know, you all cool with Mitch until the shit goes bad, then you pop him in the back, man. You know, you don't want to be in that 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 Rico spirit. And it's a lot of men in this thing that's in that. And Sakari, he's, I, uh, hey, I, I, my spirit, what I think, I think he's a snake, man. And you can just tell by a man's countenance that they ain't right. And he need to cut that shit out. All you guys in you different groups, man. You know, squash that shit among your congregations. Should hate us all you want. We don't give a damn. But, hey, we squash the beef among each other. All right? This is the book of, uh. Matthews 18, and I'm going to end it after this, man. Um, it tells you here, it says, 
uh, wherefore if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter to life, hope, or main rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. That just means cutting off the bullshit. It don't mean literally cut your arm off. No, it's meaning that if something is offending you and you can't get past it, you just got to cut it off. Let it go. OK, because it's better for you to let it go and be done with it before you hold on to it and be constantly offended at it. You know, and that's what your Howard Shah is saying, because just like if you have a person that you, you know you want to deal with, but you can't get over the offenses, somehow you got to come to a common ground. If you can't get over it. You got to depart and let it die slow, you know. Even uh, brothers depart from the camp. They say, you know, I can't really deal with this. It's a little too much. Then, you know, let it go. All right. I'm going to go down real quick. And I'm kind of pressed for time. So, Salakia from Russian. But uh, this is the book of uh, Matthew 18. And I'm going to start at verses 15. It says, Moreover, if thy brother should trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. And if, she, and if, if he should hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. So, this is the point. You know, it's better to gain a brother than to lose it because the scriptures say uh, a brother that's offended is, is roughly paraphrasing it. It's, it's, it's harder to win than to than take a city. Because I'm going to tell you like this, when men get offended in this thing, man, they become straight up just all over the place, man. They change the doctrine. They do anything. Like, you see a couple of guys doing that now. That's why Apostle Ricard said, he said, and I said it too. I said the men that come out of Great Millstone that fall out, they're the worst of the worst, man. Okay, because Great Millstone breeds some of the best brothers and some of the worst niggas, man. You know, because one thing about the men of Great Millstone, they fall out and become disgruntled. They get to scoffing because they've been built up in the scriptures so they know how to manipulate shit. You know, they can change the scriptures to their building because they've been built up at a point in time. Versus other group camps that fall out, they don't, they're not built up. So they just, they just leave and go back in the world. But you have niggas in our ranks, when they leave, they become scoffers for a couple of years and then they phase out, you know. But it says, but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. It says that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he should, should neglect to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican man. Okay, so if he ain't trying to hear you, then fuck him. He got to go. You know, you got to get rid of him because he's going to contaminate the body. Cancer, cancer, a cancerous cell is spreads. Once it affects and kills off one cell, then it spreads to the rest of the body until the body dies out. That's why you got to cut him out, man. If he ain't getting with the program, he got to go, man. Okay? So he get his act right. But anyway, I'm going to end it there. All praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai. And with that, Shalom and the Baba Ba, Shalom.